six months. This is the period that Elon Musk has estimated for the journey to Mars with Starship. The vehicle is currently being operated by a total of 39 Raptor engines. But you know, six months is very long for anyone, including you and me. And of course, NASA also doesn't like that. Therefore, NASA revealed a new engine that'll use a new energy source. They claim it'll be more powerful, safer, and can get humans to Mars faster than the Starship and Raptor engines. So, what is that engine? How's it better than the SpaceX Raptor engine? Why is NASA so confident with its engines? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Can you guess how long NASA claimed it would take to fly to Mars with their new engine? Well, the answer is 45 days. Sounds crazy, right? So what engine has such formidable capabilities? Back in early 2023, at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, SciTech Forum and Exposition, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson announced the development of a nuclear thermal rocket project in his presentation. This is really a groundbreaking idea because the aerospace industry has always used engines that burn chemicals like kerosene or liquid methane. In fact, this is not the first time this agency has thought of a nuclear thermal engine. Instead, it appeared in the 1960s with the NERVA engine design. And after successfully landing humans on the moon, this idea gained even more potential. In particular, Werner von Braun, former director of Marshall Space Flight Center and the chief architect of the Saturn V rocket, once proposed creating a rocket using nuclear energy to send humans to a more distant celestial body, Mars. However, due to many concerns about safety as well as government policy and plans at the time, this idea was abandoned and no nuclear thermal rocket has ever been launched into space. Entering this century, as technology has developed, along with the space race getting more fierce, NASA decided to revive that idea. In this attempt, they'll decide to cooperate with the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, to accelerate this project. This agency will also be responsible for developing the nuclear reactor and engine for nuclear rockets designed by NASA. The engine will be named DRACO, short for Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations. NASA officials seem to have many expectations for this project. Bill Nelson said, With the help of this new technology, astronauts can journey to and from deep space faster than ever, a major capability to prepare for crewed missions to Mars. NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy also added, Draco will be a critical part of evaluating the technologies that will take us deeper into the solar system. So, how does this engine work, and what advantages does it have that makes NASA have such high expectations? In most current engines, fuel in separate fuel tanks will be pumped into the combustion chamber and burned until it explodes. And then their exhaust gases will be released to create thrust. Unlike that principle, a nuclear thermal engine would utilize the extremely high temperatures of a nuclear reactor created by nuclear fission, where uranium atoms would be bombarded and split by free electrons. Large nuclei will be split into smaller nuclei. That process will generate a huge source of energy and extremely high temperatures, which can reach up to 2760 degrees Celsius or 5000 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat will then be used to increase the pressure of the fuel. Specifically, liquid hydrogen will be pumped through the core of the reactor at an extremely high speed. Under the effective temperature, liquid hydrogen will expand and transform into gas with extremely high pressure. This pressure will then be released through the engine's nozzle, generating thrust to help push the rocket forward. Regarding fuel, Liquid hydrogen was chosen because it's the lightest element of all the elements discovered to date, can produce high efficiency, and is very suitable for the operating principles of nuclear thermal engines. In addition, hydrogen is also an abundant material and easy to find in nature as well as in space, helping NASA expand the operation boundary. Back to that method. Its strength will be its superior performance compared to conventional engines. Although there is no specific data yet, it is expected to be three to five times more powerful. Thanks to that thrust, nuclear thermal rockets will fly faster, greatly reducing travel time in space. With the Draco engine, NASA claims they can shorten the journey to Mars to 45 days as mentioned above. 
To clarify this superiority, we can compare it with Starship, the current most powerful rocket in the world. At the closest distance of 54.6 million kilometers or 33.9 million miles, Elon Musk claimed that it would take six months for Starship to reach Mars, four times longer than NASA's estimate. This is extremely important because reducing travel time will also solve many difficult problems, including control systems, operating employees, fuel systems, energy, problems related to food, astronauts, physical and mental health, and more. Moreover, using this engine has another advantage. It'll consume less fuel. That's because it'll be based on nuclear fission instead of burning fuel like current engines using chemical fuel mixtures. Therefore, it will not need to carry large amounts of liquid oxygen, the fuel that accounts for a large amount of the total payload in current space vehicles. Currently, information about the specific process of the nuclear rocket project is still quite few. The most recent news was in July when NASA and DARPA decided to pick Lockheed Martin to develop the Draco engine demo that'll serve to demonstrate nuclear propulsion technologies in Earth orbit later this decade. Lockheed Martin is currently collaborating with BMX Technologies, a supplier of nuclear components and fuel to the U.S. This company will provide Draco's reactor and its high-assay, low-enriched uranium fuel. These organizations expect all work to be completed in the next few years to be ready for the first test flight in 2027 and aim to send a crew to Mars around 2030. So, does this project affect SpaceX's Mars colonization plan? Although both projects may create competition on the road to Mars, Elon also seems to appreciate this idea. Back in 2019, he tweeted, Nuclear thermal rocket for fast transit around solar system would be a great area of research for NASA. To date, the vehicle that'll participate in SpaceX's Mars project, Starship, is still in the testing phase. In 2023, they conducted two integrated test flights. Although it has not reached orbit yet, this rocket still shows significant progress. Entering 2024, this rocket project will be further promoted to soon achieve the set goal. Because besides the Mars plan, Starship will also have to be involved in the Artemis lunar mission. SpaceX's goal will be to help Starship reach orbit and then put it in stable operation before participating in official missions. Regarding the schedule, Elon Musk also revealed in October 2023 at the International Astronautical Congress that SpaceX intends to land the uncrewed Starship on Mars around 2027, which means within the next four years. Although their current rocket may be weaker than NASA's nuclear rocket, leading to longer journeys, SpaceX is still working hard to improve its vehicle. Raptor engines are constantly being upgraded to be more powerful. Additionally, their choice of methane also has many advantages compared to nuclear thermal engines. Methane is a clean, environmentally friendly fuel, cheaper and easier to produce, especially on Mars, where raw materials are rich to produce methane. The methane engine will also have a simpler design to help SpaceX easily produce and meet large launch needs in the future. Finally, methane is certainly much safer than nuclear energy. Although powerful, nuclear energy still has many risks, and this has been proven many times in history. This is the reason why this energy source is very strictly controlled in the world. In the coming time, both SpaceX, NASA, and other agencies will be extremely busy with their projects. The task of NASA and its partners will be to prove the reliability of the new engine, especially finding ways to fully control this powerful energy source before applying it. As for SpaceX, they'll need to continue testing and strengthening their rockets to be ready for important missions. Nothing's truly perfect. Each engine will have its own strengths and weaknesses. However, I believe these organizations have considered very carefully before implementing their plans. The important thing is whether they'll persevere in developing and improving those projects. Hopefully, the aforementioned projects will all develop well, and both can even consider cooperating and supporting each other to help humanity advance further on the path to exploring our vast universe. Human history has developed through many periods. Along with that, energy sources are always discovered and changed to suit each stage. We can point out several typical energy sources like coal, oil, solar energy, wind energy, water energy, and more. But there's another type of energy that is also more potential and powerful than these sources of energy, which is nuclear energy. 
Like many other aspects, energy issues also have a huge impact on the rocket industry. Currently, most rockets still use chemical substances as fuel, like kerosene, hydrogen, or more recently, methane. So, nuclear energy can enter this field? The answer is absolutely possible. Many companies are researching this energy to apply to their rockets. One of those companies is Pulsar Fusion. This is a UK-based startup company specializing in engine development, including engines using nuclear fuel. They are developing the largest practical nuclear fusion rocket engine ever built. Currently, this company is building a nuclear fusion chamber called Direct Fusion Drive, DFD. It's 8 meters long and is capable of containing hot plasma with temperatures up to hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius, equivalent to or even hotter than that of the sun. This will be where nuclear fission reactions take place. In general principle, it is similar to fusion on the sun, specifically creating and confining an amount of extremely hot plasma in electromagnetic field to create high-speed thrust for rockets and spacecraft. We'll clarify this process more clearly. First, the fission process will take place to create plasma. Unlike the sustained fusion reaction to generate power like traditional fusion methods, this new fusion engine will use fission energy to create high-energy plasma. The fuel will be put into the combustion chamber to participate in this fission reaction. Fuel atoms will be split into smaller nuclei called ions. This process will create a huge amount of energy and heat, turning matter into plasma like in the sun. Plasmas consist of ionized particles which serve as a self-sustaining fuel source for the engine. The high speed of ionized particles will create an extremely powerful source of energy that can generate thrust for rockets. Once created, the plasma is then confined and controlled by the electromagnetic force of the electromagnetic field coils to contain and maintain its integrity. When plasmas are launched through the engine nozzle, the above energy will generate thrust to push the rocket forward. Meanwhile, the plasma's heat will also be utilized to create power to supply the remaining systems on rockets and spacecraft. This is an outstanding strength because it can optimize fuel to help the rocket increase both speed and performance. Regarding fuel, this pulsar fusion system will use helium-3. This is a fuel with a great potential and efficiency, especially for fusion reactions. Helium-3 has the advantage of low radioactivity and safety and produces less waste than other fuels like deuterium or tritium. This is also an abundant resource that can be found on celestial bodies such as the moon. If we can exploit them for use in fission reactions, it'll not only serve to operate nuclear engines, but it'll also be a solution to the Earth's energy problem when traditional raw material sources are gradually exhausted. Therefore, it creates enormous potential for clean and sustainable energy production models in the future. With this new system, Pulsar Fusion can create powerful rockets that can achieve flight speeds of up to 500,000 miles an hour, or 805,000 kilometers an hour, and specific impulses of 10,000 to 15,000 seconds. Thanks to that insane power, nuclear fusion rockets can reduce a lot of space travel. For example, the time to reach Saturn's moon Titan will only be about two years instead of 10 years like now, or beyond when we have to send a spacecraft with a mass of about one ton to Pluto, and that'll only take about four years. As for Earth's neighbor Mars, at the closest distance of about 54.6 million kilometers or 33.6 million miles, currently it'll take us about six to eight months to reach this planet. But with its new nuclear fusion rocket, Pulsar Fusion is confident that the journey to Mars will be cut in half to only about two to three months. Currently, Pulsar Fusion is still strongly cooperating with other organizations to develop its project. They're conducting phase three of manufacturing the initial test unit. Pulsar Fusion will aim to conduct static tests in 2024 and then an in-orbit demonstration IOD of the technology in 2027. This will certainly be one of the new solutions that can compete with current Mars projects, including SpaceX's Mars Colonization Project. Starship is a rocket that uses methane as fuel. Starship's Raptor engine is still one of the most powerful engines in the world. Each Raptor 2 engine currently has a thrust of up to 230 tons or 510,000 pounds. During the second integrated test flight, the 33 engines in the Super Heavy generated more than 7,000 tons of thrust, an unprecedented thrust record in history. In the coming time, they will also release many new generations that promise to create even more crazy performances. But reaching Mars may still be very difficult for this rocket. According to Elon Musk, at the closest distance between Earth and Mars mentioned above, Starship still takes up to six months to fly to the Red Planet. Obviously, that's long enough to raise many challenges for both crewed and uncrewed missions. 
SpaceX will need to solve many problems, like technology and human resources, to control the flight throughout the journey. Solve problems with fuel sources, food, daily living problems, psychological problems with astronauts, and more. So far, those are still extremely difficult problems. At that time, nuclear-powered rockets would be a potential solution. Shortening the journey time between the two planets will solve all of the above challenges. High speed and continuous frequency will be extremely important for a difficult mission like colonizing Mars, helping us more quickly establish self-sufficient bases and cities on this planet. So, is this a threat to the SpaceX Starship? Maybe not completely. SpaceX also has reasons to choose methane for its rockets. Methane's a cheap, clean fuel source. It's easy to produce and has high combustion efficiency. It's also suitable for a Mars mission, which has abundant resources including carbon dioxide and groundwater ice, the raw materials to create methane to resupply the Starship. In terms of flight frequency, SpaceX is also making crazy plans to launch thousands of Starships to bring roughly 1 million tons to Mars every year in the future. That flight frequency will be completely sufficient to build a base on Mars. In addition, SpaceX is also trying to increase the power of their rockets by constantly researching and upgrading new engine versions. It will help them continue to increase the power of their rockets and shorten the time to reach Mars as currently estimated. As for nuclear energy, this may become a potential option for SpaceX to consider and apply. If it's possible to apply such a powerful energy source to the world's largest rocket, that's not a bad idea. Of course, combining energy and Starship will need to be considered extremely carefully because although powerful, nuclear energy will still have many risks regarding safety, development costs, legal barriers, technical challenges, and more. But nothing's impossible with Elon and the team. Colonizing Mars will be one of the most important missions for humans in this century. There will be many challenges awaiting, but talented brains will never give up and continue to move forward. The appearance of nuclear rocket and Starship are typical examples. We also need more time to wait for rocket companies to prove the efficiency of their ideas before putting them in operation. But we can be confident that we'll have the right steps on the path to exploring the vast expanses of space. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.